Now, the NYIC yes. has experienced a few tragedies. Yes. Um, we've had people who sort of heeded that national call, gone out to serve, and have ended up being killed yes. in parts of the countries that are not theirs. As a result of which, you've had people saying we should either scrape NYC mm. completely, reform it, or at least do something slightly different. Mm. What, what is your opinion regarding what we should do? Uh, my opinion is very clear. Of course, we should do that. Um, we we cannot, no, no. We cannot be talking about scrapping the NYC. Uh, I must tell you that the NYC has been in existence for 45 years. And um, is one of the legacies we still have in this nation today. Uh, to have been able to stand strong and tall for 45 years with a lot of achievements. In, in those 45 years, Nigeria yes. has changed a lot. Yes. So you've gone from a state of relative peace to a place where virtually every part of the country has some sort of conflict. Yes. How has the NYC scheme evolved to, um, you know, be able to deal with these newer challenges that, mm. that have raised their heads in this country? Of course, um, we remember that we have a law that sets up the NYC. Uh, we have a mandate, and that mandate... Uh, basically is uh, pursuing national unity and integration, cohesion amongst the But you seem people. to be doing the same thing you were doing uh, 45 years ago. No, I'm coming. coming. Okay. And um, I want to tell you that we have not lost sight of this mandate, but we have also decided to expand the mandate because we also saw in, in, the, in the law that we should, you know, bring up our youth for self-reliance. Even right now as we speak, the NYC has gone you know, um, a big time into what we, have, we call the skill acquisition and entrepreneurship development. Right now, as we speak, in all our orientation training, it's embedded as a major uh, aspect of the training. We have about 14 days training on entrepreneurship development and skill acquisition. On the key mandate for yes. which you were set up, yes. promoting unity, patriotism, yes. What has changed? Um, a lot has changed. A lot has changed. Um, when the NYC started, we were just about 2,000, over 2,000 or so. But today we are talking about 350,000 Nigerian graduates being mobilized. So that's a lot that has changed. Do you think if the service was voluntary rather than compulsory, yes. people would be willing to take part? Uh, I must tell you the truth. If you want to, to, to be sure of the truth, people are ready to take You know, part. we have corporates here. It's yes. such a shame that um, apparently your law doesn't allow them to speak. I wish you could give them permission well, so that I could, well, no, but I, I I must could ask tell, them I must tell you, why directly. Am I, why am I saying this? The, uh, the law of the scheme, the law of the scheme says if you are 30 years and above, you are not allowed to serve. Why is it that those who are 30 years and above, they are looking for how to reduce their age so that they can serve? Yes. Let me bring that, in uh, the, the gentleman in light blue and then dark blue behind him, and then we'll come to the people in the middle. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, good day. Uh, yeah. My name is Wabi Donoboy. I'm the national treasurer of the IYC, that's the Ijo Youth Council. Um, the madam from NYC actually touched a little of what I want to talk about, but um, I want to say I'm proud to have done NYC. I did my NYC in Austin State. I'm from the South South. I married from the East, and most of my business is in the North. So I can say I'm, I'm a full Nigerian. Mm -hmm. But um, apart from that, um, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have been having this conversation. Why? Because 20 years ago, in my um, which is I, I wanted to actually ask, when did you serve? I served in 2007. Okay. Yeah. So about 11 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 20 years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Why? Because. We all felt like Nigerians. I had a Mohammed in my class. I had um, an Aisha in my class. I had um, Ukon in my class. I had all of them in my class. Between, two th um, between 1998 and now, what changed? I won't say democracy because democracy is um, sacred. But I will say one thing we should look at is or are the politicians, the people that have ruled us between 1998 and today. Um, politics in Nigeria is a, a bit tricky. Um, a politician will need his constituents to be elected. Now, for him to appease his constituents, he will want to appease them. So that's now um, what the um, 
the poet was saying earlier, he was like, why would he want to be Nigerian when he, being from the Southeast, will give him more benefits? Why will he give him more benefits? Because his political officer from the Southeast will favor him more. That is what we should be preaching against. We should be preaching against politicians up there believing in a united Nigeria, favoring everybody as Nigerians, not as a constituents or as um, your brother or your sister. Okay, and, and we are going to have to take a quick break. When we come back, part of what we will do is to essentially examine how do we actually do that in, in practical terms. Don't forget, if you are at home, you can join the conversation on our social media handles, Twitter at Channel TV, at Adria Ahmed, on YouTube at Channels Web using the hashtag NGTheCore. You can also follow us on Facebook at Channels Forum. Don't go away. We'll be back shortly. Thank you.